Howdy, y'all. Excuse me. Late, late dinner. Um, so. Uh, <laughs> um, so, a few things. First off, I just got done watching the trailer online for Saul. I saw the poster for it um, at the theater I just came from. So, let's talk about that just a little sec. You know how they say there's nothing new under the sun? They're right. You know how they say a good artist creates, but a great artist steals? Yeah, they, they do that. They do it a lot in Hollywood. Um, this is no different. Uh, literally, because this movie, Soul, the little animated little thing, yeah. That whole premise, down to the number of characters, pretty much, uh, is... Like, a rehash of... I can't remember what it was, but I believe it was a Disney flick, I think. Oh, I forget what it was called. And I believe it had Ernest Borgnine in it, I'm not sure. Or a guy who looks like Ernest Borgnine. But basically, the concept was... Um, was... And the title was only, like, one word. I remember it being something stupid... Uh, uh, but anyway, there was, uh, this mom who was about to give birth, and her dad had died, and so it takes place in the afterlife, where the youngling who's about to be born, of course, is life-size, he's like 12 or whatever, 12 to 14, and he is about to enter the gate that, well, it's just a big door with a light inside of it, uh, if he, it says everyone has to walk through this door. It says you have to go through this door and be born on Earth. He says, but well, what is on Earth? And people tell him, well, it's a big place and has bad things in it. Bad things? But I don't like bad things. Why do I have to go? I don't want to go. You know, he's, he's hesitant. He stops. So the mother who goes into labor suddenly stops. It's like, well, I was going into labor, but now I can't. You know, it just stopped for whatever reason. So then she goes home. And so they said, well, we had to convince a member. Um, free will is a thing, so we can't force him to go. We have to convince him this is in your best interest because this is the world is such a great place. <laughs> they don't they don't plead that case well at all. It's stupid. Uh, if they did, they would have picked a better place than New York. They don't even go to a museum for crying out loud. It's not that I remember, uh, but. The thing is, uh, they call in people from purgatory. Not necessarily hell, but kind of just people who are just in purgatory. So they're not good, they're not evil, they're just meh. So they said, okay, let's get, you know, this old guy who's been here for like 20 years. <laughs> you know, let's get him. Uh, so this gambling womanizer, or something to that effect, is tasked with going to Earth with this kid to show him how good the world is because he loves the world he loves living it up being alive and so his job is to teach the kid this so they go there and they talk about things and of course immediately as soon as they get there he's, bom he's bombarded by the temptations by his ex-girlfriends or girls or whatever they pull over and say dad is that you I thought you were dead it's like, no no not me I gotta take this kid and he's kind of torn he ends up going with the kid taking him to sexual liberty telling him all about life and yes life sucks the kids are like, but why does life have to suck? And it's like, because it's life. He doesn't convince him anything by the end of this film. But by the end of the film, the guy has to... It's more of his... It's more his journey than it is the kid. Because the kid doesn't learn anything. Sanct you know, the, 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 the thrill of life. No, no, none of that. He, uh, he and the mom are connected. So if he... And if the door closes to life... You know, if the kid doesn't pass through within 24 hours, the door of life will close. And then no one will be born. So you have your... Bullshit stakes, you know, uh, in place. So the so you have your setup and then your execution, and quite frankly, he tries to give a speech on the best possible thing, but then he collapses. Oh, I can't walk through the door to go to the other door to be born back in this world. But the guy, but the old man's like, I could carry you, but then I die. But I don't want to leave Earth. I like living. 
And people on this side says, we can't help you. We cannot cross the threshold. You have to come in. Which means, old man, you have to fucking die so that the world can live. Yeah, I know. It's a, it's a, it's a fuck you self-sacrifice thing. Where, I don't know, he couldn't just, like, hand him through the threshold. I'm saying that, screaming that at the screen at 2 a.m. or whatever. Or, or at 8, at 9, at 9 when it's this thing. It's like, really? He has to cross the threshold? Oh, and the mom sees him, by the way, down the street. Where he, they kind of look at each other turn and then he walks in through the through the door um it's a thing it's a whole thing but yeah he walks through the door thus sacrificing his his new his new uh position in life you know his new you know his current existence to give the kid to get the kid in there the kid then magic you know feels better he then walks through the door and then he is born and then life continues as always and then he gets to take the elevator up to heaven because he self-sacrificed himself. Yeah, it's it's a weak premise. Trust me, Holes is a lot better. And I believe they have the same lead actor. That little kid from Holes, I believe I believe that's him. I'm not entirely sure, but I think it's him. So anyway, yes. Um, uh, yeah, so... Well, if I know the kid, the actors from there, then maybe... Hold on a second. Let me look this up real quick. H-O-L-E-S. Holes, film 2003. Uh, let's see. Cast. Cast, cast. I think this is him. Movies and TV shows. Holes, Roll Bounce, Walk Tall, We the Coyotes, Going to the Mat, no. Remember the Days, Badass, Soy Nero, no, 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 Friday After Next. Golden Blaze. Crimes. I think this might be it. Breath. Where's Breath? I know this kid, I know he's from something. What do you have to say? Boogie Town. Huh. Weird. Well, it must be a different actor then. Oh, wait, hold on. Let's try this one. See what happens. Sarah LaBeouf. Boof. Wait. Oh, wait. Sarah LaBeouf? No, I don't think I don't think you like him. Oh. Hmm. Peanut Butter Falcon, the Maniac, Fury, yeah, he was in Holes, okay. Indiana Jones, Trivia, Wallace, Pie. Oh, am I getting these guys? Okay, never mind about that then. Okay, never mind. <sighs> this whole damn day. All right, so yeah, so Soul is just the beginning is like the Muppets take Manhattan, where this guy who you know is 
he finally gets his dream because he's a musician gets his shot to play for the first time in a band you know uh so he he's happy he's walking down the street and it's like yeah he's gonna hit by a car oh he falls down a manhole cover okay and then he goes to heaven it's all abstract and stuff it's nice and then he meets a kid and i'm like he meets a kid if it was him by himself then that would make more sense because we've seen movies like that the original guy who plays the straight um uh, uh saxophone thing and then there was a remix with crest rock those are the solo ones this is the one with a kid who doesn't want to go to earth so that's why it reminded me of this film instead of the other films like I said, nothing original. So, yeah, so the kid doesn't want to go, and the guy's, like, telling him, look, oh, it's all interesting stuff. Oh, it's like, all right, there is no taste or feel here. So, like, so, of course, he doesn't know what living is. So, they're of course, they're going to say, and the world's all vibrant, so, of course, it's not going to take place in, you know, downtown New York. It's going to be out in, the, like, Central Park or someplace lush and green, something actually shows life and not decadence. Uh, not very healthy living, let's put it that way. Um, so yes, it's an interesting... It's Okay, it's more of a colorful take on the old that old um, premise of the guy who wants to get to Earth and the kid who doesn't want to go to Earth story. Uh, so yeah... Um, I swear, people just are watching midnight television and just getting inspired by that. But whatever. So, there is uh, there's that. Okay, so on to the pier that is the stance. The, <laughs> the hunt. Oh, fuck. Um, first thing out of my mind is so what was so fucking controversial about it back in August? Answer to that? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, was it rather comedic? Yes. Was it entertaining? Yes. The best way to describe it, it's like as if uh, the Hunger Games took place or uh, the world's deadliest hunter... You know, the one where the guy gets shipwrecked on an island and then he has to face off against some ex some eccentric hunter who says, I bring people or find people on my island, I hunt them. That'll gig. If it took place in the universe of Kill Bill, that that would be a good description of it. Uh, so yes, it's it's fun. It's, uh, it's entertaining. Char I love the characters. And granted, yes, we're not, we don't spend too much time with them. Not that we really need to. These people are kind of one note. And they're not... They're not professionals. They're like weekend warriors. You know, the people who do this kind of more on a lark than anything else. So committing to it and being, you know, got this steadfast and got it down good, they don't. The only person who has been training for months and not weeks is the lady at the end, the final boss. So... Uh, yeah, so, apparently, what these victims were, the people who were kidnapped in this, were people... So, all this happened was over a tweet, which I think is rather an interesting refreshment of what kicks this thing off. The exciting incident was a tweet. Apparently, it was a joke where we kicked this thing off. But yeah, let's laugh about our imaginary uh, evilness. You know, we take, we kidnap people and we kill them, right? It was a joke. So if anyone's over here, this, it's like, it was just a gag. It was just a joke. But then people believe them. They, in turn, or like she, in turn, the big final boss lady, in turn, then decides, okay, if these people believe it to be so, so much, I think she has a psychotic break that she, that says, well, if they think it's so, then therefore we'll make it so. You know, if they're going to act like it's real, then we'll make it real for them. So, the reason they were collected was because they had tweeted back. No, like thousands of people had tweeted this, but they wanted to keep it down to 12. So, 
they had collected these people, put them all, all in that field, and then, well, you can see the trailer. And I won't spoil the, the endings twist-y thing, but uh, the point is, yeah, it's rather quite original. It has similar themes that I'm familiar with, like Kill Bill, and uh, yes, I was read that book in elementary, they, re they read us the weirdest shit in elementary school back in the 90s. But, um, and what, you think the, 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 uh, reading, um, Helen, um, Hel Helen, the, the girl in the attic, what was her name? Helen, oh, it slips my mind, the famous lady. Who, uh, who was in the uh, World War II. It's going to come to me 20 minutes after I finish this thing. But yeah, um, her, we read the book, we saw the movie, we saw Schindler's List. I have two copies now. Uh, Schindler's List, and um, we read the... Well, I don't think we... No, I don't think we read the book. We saw the movie, because the book would be too big. Uh, so yeah, we saw the movie, and... Yeah... So, um, so I don't think that that was like the most saddest and weirdest thing they showed us in, you know, growing up. No, they showed us w weirder and more insane stuff in elementary school. It's like, Jesus, people, really? It's like, you want to traumatize us? God. But anyway, so... I'm not entirely sure, but I just remembered that one of our teachers said that we're, uh, a turd? He says, you're a turd, and I'm a turd. He means Earth turd. It's, it was more of a, like, saying Terran, I believe, or something like that. It wasn't mean that you're shit. It was mean that you are an Earth-bound or Earth-related entity. Anyway. Um. Or something along those lines. But, yeah, I'm surprised he didn't get fired for that. But anyway, yes, um, so this is a really good, uh, story. It's told rather well, and I think the reason why people didn't like it was because it showed people with power being able to do whatever the hell they want because they're people with power. So, yeah, there was no fictional equivalency like in, like I said before, like in The Hunger Games, you know, that, that, um, whoever Dean went up against, the guy with the white beard, you know, uh, him, you know, there was no, uh, 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 equivalency, they, you know, they called them out, you know, the one percenter is people in charge of Indy 500 companies, you know, they showed them as that, as people who are filthy rich. And it wasn't because of the violence. It wasn't because they were brandishing guns. It was just a, a straight equivalency. That, that was it. And you get enough of them who don't like that, then they're going to stall up your film, and everyone else will basically state a bullshit reason why. Remember, Rambo came out the week before, and no one really griped about the violence in that. They just... The only thing they bitched and moaned about was that they felt that the Central American cartels were stereotypical. Like, it's a cartel. How is that supposed to be stereotypical? What did, did they come out wearing sombreros and ponchos and eating churros? Saying, Epa! No! They came in there like a fucking army, like they supposed to. Wearing, you know, standard military, you know, garb. You know, they wore shit. And... And then Rambo in the second wind, why, I don't know. He couldn't just have done that before. You know, tear through them like a bag of leaves. But I guess you gotta show the character at his lowest first and then have the rebound. It's like, yeah, 40 minutes later. But, uh, yeah, so... So if Rambo wasn't an issue with its violence, then this less tamer violence is suddenly the key focus? It doesn't make any sense. So, don't listen to the reasons. It's all just, it's all just bullshit. 
it's just a damn it's just a darn good film i'll get it on dvd when it comes out watch the extras and all that and yes it highlights a flame wo a f a f a frame frame a flame war it shows that when people take you seriously, they are going to respond seriously. And that's the thing. You really shouldn't joke about things when you think, oh, it's going to be a laugh. You know, and it's like, it, it, yeah, it, it's going to blow up in your face. People are going to take you seriously because you are people with power. Then what happens? You became that thing. So you are totally capable of doing it. Yeah, so having a flame war be a literal um, exciting incident that kicked off this whole thing it was rather very original. It's nice, it, and everyone would know that, and everyone would identify, ah, yes, that makes sense, because we've seen stuff like that before all the time on social media. <sighs> so that is... Well, not a full review. Oh, sorry. Um, so the characters, as briefly as we know them, because she, because the early character tears through them like a bag of leaves, uh, I found that rather refreshing. You know, that these characters are human, but they're still wayward. They think they're doing the world a service? Or some sort of revenge gig? I don't know. But, you know, it's nice to see people actually hesitate and kind of feel a little bit bad and see antagonists be try to be politically correct <laughs> about everything and failing at most of it. That's the thing. You can't be politically correct on everything. Uh, people have biases. So, so yeah, it's, it's, character-wise, it's entertaining. Um, production value-wise, it's very good. Um, there's no shaky cam. You know, there's none of that. I'm sorry, more like this. Um, there's... Uh, um, there's nothing that's too far that's unbelievable. So all the bridges are you know, perfect. They're all right there. They're all within logical reach. Um, so yeah, all around, this is just a good film. It just got more publicity than it should have because, like before, people took this film too seriously and that's the point of this don't take you don't need to overreact you don't need to go right to 11. i've seen that a lot in life where people take that right to 11. like i said before in my other rants where it's like i see people it's like where what happened i went right to 11. why because clearly i'm the victim of what well this guy 20 feet away he, he said something or did something and i found very offensive so i went and i i did not confirm i went and i ran to the moral police did you confirm? No, because clearly it's about me. Clearly, yes. 20 feet away. Again, it, it, it just shows that this world is just full of snowflakes. And they will just believe they will, they will be offended by whatever or the drop of a hat. Because they perceive that as clearly I could be a victim of anything at any possible moment. By anyone. So therefore, it has to be true. Instead of bothering to confirm it for yourself, are you talking to me? No. You know. Are you are you trying to offend me over there? Facing the other way? Downhill? Going the other way? No. Then 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 why? Because people believe that Being triggered is such an okay thing. As a kid, you just snap at it and you go right to 11. Instead of just saying, Meh. I had to deal with tons of shit. What, you think this is my first fucking glasses? These weren't my first glasses. These are professional. These are nice. I wish I had these as a kid. I look back at my, at my old, you know, first grade pictures. And I'm thinking, Jesus, God, those are, the, those are dork glasses right there. No wonder I got, kept getting picked on by assholes every left and right. I wasn't asking for it, but shit happens, and you have to deal with that, you know, and 
you know, people, they weren't shy about it either. They weren't, you know, like, well, there could have been a miscommunication. No, they were straight up assholes. There was no ifs, ands, or buts. They want to make sure I am in your face assholishness to you. You know. So now, it's all changed. It's all reversed. Where people think, you know, they could be a victim of anything at any moment. So going right to 11 is okay. Instead of shrugging it off. Or make sure. It could have been a misunderstanding. Why don't you find out? You know, so telling everyone else that tells people else that tells you guys that, you know, calls your congressman that comes back and then people tell you, what did I do? Well, you did something today that offended somebody. Which was it? So if you're supposed to teach someone a lesson and it goes through like 20 people before it gets back to that person that you believe did the offending, but no one tells you, no one tells them what it is. So it's like, yeah, I was talking all day. What was it? So it's like, so if I'm supposed to learn the lesson, or anyone else is supposed to learn the lesson, what is the lesson? It's like, be careful what you talk about. It's like, but again, which part? I could be talking about, hey, diddle diddle the cat and the fiddle, and I could piss off anybody else in the, in the universe. You know, it's like, what? Which part? It doesn't make any sense. So yes, this movie resonates very 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 with the here and now it's very topical because it shows just how snowflakey the current society is i wish i had these kind of these kinds of rights where i could just go running to the nearest authority and say this person's being a meanie can you do something about that you know i'm talking to stick them in a corner <laughs> no, no, they, they hardly ever really did that. So, yeah, but it's nice to see a lead female character who's not, feels like she's on a platform. It's like, hey, look at me. I'm a strong female character who could take care of myself. I don't need no man to help me, not even a love interest. But that's the thing. You don't make that the statement. You just make it what it is. Like our lead character, uh, dang, I forgot what her name was. I only mentioned it twice. Uh, but uh, yeah, she doesn't oversuit or doesn't have to state, I don't need no man in my life. Like in Princess and the Frog, where it's like, I got no time for a man. You know, isn't isn't like that. This is just her surviving, you know. And even if there was a guy there, I kind of really wouldn't care if they had a love and, you know, a, a chemistry or not. I'm more concerned whether or not they will still live to see tomorrow. So, her, much like Xena and the original She-Ra, you know, um, and yes, to a greater extent, April from the cartoon series, original 90s, late 80s cartoon series, you know, strong female characters who don't feel like they have to make a point that they're strong female characters. They just are strong female characters. You know, they don't have to point that out to you. Uh, so that's very refreshing. Unlike Ray, where it just feels a little... A little forced that she's a strong, independent female. A little bit. But not too much, so I don't have an entirely a whole gripe about her character. Just a, just a little bit, just a little bit, which is is good. Cause I really don't want to hate Star Wars, but they're really making it difficult for me to not not like these people. Uh, to, sorry, to not like these people because they're just aggravates me. I just don't know what they're doing. But anyway. Yes, so strong female lead, good characters, good story that's relevant to now. Good uh, cinematography. Um, pew, 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 pew. Uh, oh, and we saw the Black Widow trailer again, so apparently we saw what Hopper was, was have been, has been doing while he was in... in uh, in the Soviet Union or whatever. 
Uh, we'd like to see uh, the SNL people make us get about that. Alright, so take care of it all and uh, see you at the movies.